You sure we're going about this the right way, Joe? Oh, I'm positive. Please, let me do the thinking. All right, 25. How about it now? Come on! Oh, that's it. That's it. Ah, that's good. Very good. All right, let it down easy. Easy. Oh, I told you to be careful. You know I got a bad back. Oh, oh, oh. I'm sorry, Joe. Oh, that's all right. Ah. I'll be all right in a minute. I'm pushed. Well, that was three more than yesterday. You're in shape. Joe, you, you don't reckon we're going off on the deep end of this whole idea? You're not getting scared, are you? No, I ain't scared, but that burnage you got me picking up everything and pushing and pulling everything on the ranch. I'm going to be so pooped I can't get into Virginia City. Oh, that's called conditioning. Conditioning. Yeah. Now, we've gone along with it this far, haven't we? With this training program? All right, just trust me a little bit longer. Yeah. I'll let you do the managing, Joe, but it, it seems to me like I'm doing all the work. Hoss. Hoss, I'm giving you half of my winnings, aren't I? Oh, yeah. Yeah, thanks, Joe. That's all right. All right, you ready for the thumping exercises? Let's have at it. Okay. You ready, Hoss? All right. Ah, let's do something different today. Your head's in shape. We'll work on the body. All right. All set? All right. Oh, you're getting there. You're getting there. You all set, brother? Oh. Hoss, you're there. You are there. What's going on here? Oh, hi, Paul. I'm... I'm in training. You're in training? In training for what? Why, uh... Well, tell him, manager. Yeah. Well, you know that circus is coming in town in a few days, Pa? Yeah. Well, they have a wrestler in the circus, see? His name is uh, Bearcat Samson. Mm -hmm. Well, they will give $100 to any man who can pin this Bearcat Samson in five minutes. <laughs> and you're the one who's going to do it. We sure are. Horse... Now, heaven knows you're as sturdy as a Missouri mule, but well, this Bearcat Sampson or whatever his name is, he's a professional wrestler. He makes his living at it. Pa! Pa, horse is in shape. Look at him. This Bearcat or anybody else won't stand a chance with him. You can't knock him off his feet. Horse, this man knows every trick in the book. Now, do you, you really think you're ready for him? Well, I don't know, Paul, but... I sure hate to think about all this training we've been going through just going to waste. Well, if you want to get your lumps, don't let me stop you. Thanks, Pa. Don't worry. We'll be careful. Oh. I'll, uh, I'll straighten all them out, Paul. Start straightening. Right now. Yes, sir. They'll, they'll be good as new by breakfast. I want you to, to do me a favor. Oh, sure, Paul. Now, when Mr. Ramsey from the railway company comes over this afternoon to discuss putting that, that spur across a piece of our property. Yeah, sure, what do you want? Will you two stay out of sight? I don't want him to think that whatever your problem is, is hereditary.
keeper, Kent Sampson, take on all challenges. That's it, dear. Cut right in there. Now it starts right away. Hurry, hurry, hurry. See, Bear Cat Samson take on all challenges. Come on. Ho, oh, oh, ho, get in here, folks. Come on, put that. Wait a minute. All right, go ahead. As you folks know, the Tweety Circus is prepared to pay $100 to any man who can throw and pin Bear Cat Samson in a five minute fall. Ah, uh, Bear Cat. Come on. Hey, Joey, he does look professional to me. Who, oh, him? He's all brains and no brawn. You'll murder him. He's never run into anything like you before. You reckon? Uh, we'll pin him. We'll flatten him. We'll literally rip him limb from limb. We? Where, where are you getting that we stuff? Wait a minute. You think for one minute you'll be sitting here right now if it wasn't for me? Well, I reckon you're right, Joe. Thanks. What are brothers for? And for a try at the one hundred dollars today, we got the uh, Hush Cartwright. Oh, God love him, but I think that Missouri mule-like brother of mine is about to be had. Oh, it's in pretty good condition to me. Well, you're not forgetting that he's being managed by Little Joe. Yeah, I know, but it's the same. I'll bet you your next month's wages on horse. Well, now, I don't like betting against my own kin, but money is money. You're on. And now, folks, the big contest will begin. Hey! Hard right. All right, this is it. Line him with footwork, boss. Now, you both know the rules. Understand? You pin old Bearcat in five minutes and a hundred dollars is yours. Let's go. Uh, go! Go! Free wages out of you. Hasn't won yet. All right, pin him. Oh, stop, squeeze him and pin him. Hadn't froze with the handle, he'd have pinned Bearcat easily. Well, there's no doubt about it. He's a big, strong boy, but gotta play by the rules, Pop. The rules. Well, you keep up the smart talk, boy. I'll give you some rules to follow. Oh, my ribs. I think they busted. I'm sorry, Mr. Mr. Bearcat. I guess I just got carried away or something. Oh, you got carried away, all right. Didn't you hear Mr. Tweedy say you had to pin him? Pin him to the ground. You mean we ain't gonna get that hundred? 
You heard the rules. Oh, my managing wasted. I sure feel bad about this, Mr. Tweedy. You feel bad? How do you think he feels? We better get him to a doctor. Come on, let's give him a hand. Sure, but then bust none of old Bearcat's ribs. I mean, you sure knocked us out of a hundred dollars by squeezing them so long. You did it, Hoskart, right? Crack four of Bearcat's ribs. Yeah, well, we, we, we sure didn't do it intentionally, Mr. Tweedy. Well, that ain't the point. First, I lost all my wild animals at Carson City. And now, Bearcat's will have to be laid up two, maybe three weeks. And outside of old Sheba, I haven't got any other attraction for the Tweedy Circus. Who's old Sheba? A lop-eared elephant who pulls the circus wagon. I sure am sorry, Mr. Tweedy. Feeling sorry ain't gonna keep the Tweedy Circus from going under. Or a feed bear cat's wife and five kids. Five kids? With a wife. Wife. Sure is there something I can do. I... Well, now, son, there just might be now. How could you even think of doing a thing like that? Well, Paul, all we did was promise Mr. Tweedy that I'd take Bearcat's place just for three weeks, just till he got back on his feet again. Yeah, Mr. Tweedy's in real, real bad straits. Oh, he's in real, real bad straits. What about me? I need you here. We gotta supply the ties for that railroad contract I signed with Ramsey. Yeah, well, see, if we'd have, we'd have known about that, Paul, then we, we never would have signed that contract with Mr. Tweedy. You signed a contract with Tweedy? Oh, yes, sir. Bear, Bearcat's five little kids were involved, Pa. Oh, and a wife. Well, I think you better let him go. Give him a chance to see the cold, cruel world. You stay out of this, Adam. So your contract with Tweety is more important than my contract with Ramsey. Is he paying you as much as I am? <laughs> I'm glad you asked that. You see, Paul, me and little Joe are going to split $25 for every wrestling match. $25 after every wrestling match. Win or lose? Huh? Oh, little Joe, what? Well, you, you, you got to win them. And you make sure that Tweety pays you for the ones that you might win. Now, look, we've been with you for three and a half weeks now, Angus. Bearcat's fine. He can go back into the ring. We've made our final tally. You owe us $400. Boys, as I look back, uh, I think I was a little hasty in making our deal. Meaning what? Well, expenses are high nowadays, mighty high. And, uh, well, uh, the truth is, I'm flat broke. Well, that couldn't be because of those high-stake poker games you get into in every single town we hit, could it? Now, see here, Cartwright. Now, I you don't... see here, Mr. Tweedy. Little Joe's right, and you know it. Every penny we've made for you just goes in one hand right out the other in them dang poker games you play. Yeah. Well, I won a few hands, too. Well, fine. That's fine. And all you got to do is pay us the 400 honest American dollars you owe us right now. Our money... Mr. Tweedy. But you boys don't understand. There's children involved and a little mother. Now listen, Tweedy. Horse and I were honest with you. We were real, real honest with you. And all we want is the $400 you owe us right now. Now, now, violence will get you nothing. I'll pay you some way. Hey, Paul. Paul, how are you? Well, the lost souls return. Hey. Well, good well, it's good you. to see you. Adam, how you doing? <laughs> yes, sir, we're back, and me and little Joe ain't above saying it's nice to be aboard again. Well, we are educated. Well, it's sure good to have you back. 
Amen. One more week with this slave-driving father of ours, and I'd have been ready to take up wrestling myself. <laughs> <laughs> you older brothers learned a little appreciation while you boys have been gone. Yeah, break up the team, it gets a little tougher, doesn't it? Huh? Right. <laughs> well, Hoss, you won them all, didn't you? Oh, boy. I'm just lucky. Oh, lucky heck, boy. It was fantastic, really. Nobody could dent them one right after the other. Pinned them all. Ah, Joe, don't get carried away. I was... Well, boss, obviously it must have been good. Look at all the money you made. Well, little Joe wrote about $400. Yeah, but you, you, you told us once, pal, uh, a little bit of 100% is better than nothing at all. A sad story is about to begin. Now, we didn't come back empty-handed, if, uh, if that's what you're getting at. You don't have to worry about that. Well, is this something we should worry about? Well, no. No, just that we decided not to take the cold cash. We thought it'd be better if we took it out in livestock instead. Oh, well. Sometimes that's very good business. You boys have a, have a good eye for good-blooded stock. Well, where is it? I'd like to see it. Well, it's, uh, it's out in the barn. Well, let's have a look. Well, come on, let's go. After looking at nothing but railroad ties, anything else is bound to look good. Even something that Tweety stuck you with. If I wrestled like you manage, I'd be in the hospital. Well, how many times have I told you, don't worry? Many. Many, 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 many. Wait, Paul. Wait! Wait a minute, Paul. Just yeah, hold up. Wait. 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 We, we just want to say, we, we know we should have taken the money. Oh, now, look, little Joe. You know what I've always said? A good head of stock is worth its weight in gold in this part of the country. Oh, we, we, we got a real bonanza in there, Paul. Look, Paul, there's, there's something you got to understand. See, me and little Joe... Now, look, Hoss, like I said before, I trust your judgment. Now, let me see this animal that you took instead of cash. Yes, sir. She was as, as tame as a plow horse right after a hard day's work in the field. This is what Tweedy gave you for hard cash? Well, he was broke, Pa. What, what, what do you think you're going to do with an elephant? Oh, hey, Pa, maybe we could, maybe we could train her to plow. <laughs> I got to admit, there's a lot of livestock there. I, I just don't believe it. I, I really don't believe it. I, I don't believe that two reasonably intelligent young men could leave home for a couple of weeks and... Come back with an elephant. But, Paul, she's tame. Why, she can... Why, she can... She can... She, hey, can, she is tame. Let me show you what she can do, Pa. Really. She is tame. Come on. Come here, Sheba. Sheba, come, come on. Come on, Sheba. Come on. Come on, Come on, Sheba. Come on. Come on. What do you see, Pa? Sheba. Oh, Sheba. Down, Sheba. Down, Sheba. All the way down, Sheba. All the way. That's it. That's it. Up, Sheba.
Get rid of her. What's the matter, Pa? Don't you like her? Joseph, that peanut burner will, will spook the livestock. Come winter, she'll eat us out of house and home. Yeah, and there's a touch of fall in the air. Oh, boy. Tweety really slick at you, fellas. Pretty good. Now, you take that elephant back and get the hard cash. Pa, oh, we, uh, we can't do that. Oh, you can, huh? And why not? Because we signed a paper. The same we take the elephant instead of the cash. Now, look. I want that elephant out of here by the time I get back from town. Is that understood? I gotta go in and wire Ramsey, find out when he wants the ties delivered so we can start floating them down Snake Creek. Well, I got the ties cut, but getting them down off the mountain, I'm afraid, is gonna be a job for the uh, lost souls here. Yeah. Adam's done more than his share. Hey, uh, Pa, you know, I, I was just thinking, since you're going to go into town anyway, I thought maybe you might just talk to Angus Tweedy about taking old Sheba back. And we, we, we could go in with you and, and watch you negotiate the way only you can negotiate, Pa. I could, we could learn something. Yeah, I guess you would learn something. You'll learn how to negotiate those ties down Snake Creek. Adam, you show him the way. I'll show him the way, but I've touched my last railroad tie. I, are you, are you going to talk to Mr. Tweedy for us? <clears throat> Please? Boss, now tell me the truth. Mm -hmm. That elephant, is she real gentle like you say? She sure is, Paul. She's, she's as gentle as an old hound dog. Give me that. He's the greatest. You know that stage is more than a half hour late. Look in. Starting your own circus, Ben? Raising the body bit sock at Ponderosa. <laughs> no, I'd never believe that in the wide world if I didn't see it myself. Up, up, up. Roy, is Tweety still in town? Yeah, he's pitching his tent right down the street there. Oh, good. Mr. Tweety is going to convert this animal here into hard cash. Good. Come on, Sheba. Come on, Sheba. I remember one time you unloaded Sheba three times. Only to have it back when the new owner couldn't afford a feed bill. Yes, sir, Tweety, you sure got him coming and going. Now, you see here, Bearcat. Ah, uh, don't look now, but here comes part of your family. <laughs> Sheba, come here. <laughs> you hold it. Hold it. Sheba, my old Sheba. You don't know how much I've missed you, old girl. That's I'm, uh, I'm Ben Cartwright. <laughs> how do you do, Mr. Cartwright? Have the boys been taking good care of old Sheba? Well, if you mean by that, has she been eating good? You might say that they've been taking extra good care of her. I've missed the old gal something fierce. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Because, you know, I think she's missed you too. So why don't you give me the money that you owe my sons, and you can get Sheba back, and you can both be happy with each other. Oh, I'd love to, Mr. Cartwright, but I'm flat broke. I'm sure the boys told you I had a couple of losing poker hands and... But Mr. Tweedy, how much cold cash could you raise right now to take sheep off my hands? Well, uh, fond as I am of old Sheba, she ain't getting any younger. Mr. Tweedy. And with feet so how high, much? why... Uh, Mr. Cartwright, way I figure it, old Sheba would be much happier living a life of ease out on your ranch. 
Here at the circus, she really works for her food. No, sir, Mr. Cartwright. I couldn't deny old Sheba this chance to live out her days without a care. You really have a heart of gold, don't you, Mr. Tweedy? Well, who do you think you're trying to flim-flam this time? My sons again? Now, if you think an elephant never forgets... Come on, Sheba. Come on. Sheba would bring customers to your store from miles around, from all over the countryside, just to see her. Not interested, Ben. Now, Mr. Anderson, I just think of this. You get a painted canvas, and you put it over Sheba. And on the canvas, along the side, are the words, Anderson Mercantile. And you parade her all over the countryside, advertising your store. Hmm. No. No, not interested. Mr. Anderson. I'll sell her cheap. How much? Four hundred dollars. Four hundred dollars? I've been thinking in terms of fifty or sixty dollars. Now you say four hundred. <laughs> hey, stop it, man. Cheaper! Come on, get Get out! Get out of there, Cheaper! Sorry, Mr. Anderson. You should be. <laughs> you just bought a sack of peanuts. Ben, I got a complaint about you and that elephant. Complaint? What for? Oh, for just about scaring to death that horse and rider was on the street here yesterday. Well, I got just as much right in the street as that cowboy. Now, Ben, I ain't going to argue that legal point with you, but you're just going to have to get rid of that elephant. I know. I know, Roy. You want to pay cash for those peanuts, or should I put it on your bill? Put it on my bill. <laughs> All right, come on, Sheba. Now, let's go. Sheba, come on. One word from him and she does as she pleases. <laughs> All right. All right. But just as soon as that darn elephant has finished eating those peanuts, you, Roy Coffey, are coming with me officially to call on Mr. Angus Tweedy. Yes, sir. My deal with the Cartwright boys was all fair and square, Sheriff. They signed that paper. And I say that you knew this would happen all along. Sir, you make me out as a conniving scoundrel. Oh, you bet. In spades. Sheriff, has this man any legal claim against me? Nope, not at all. Ben, I'm afraid he's got the win in hand. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you do have the win in hand, Mr. Tweedy. Take her. She's yours. Take her. I told you yesterday I didn't want her. She's getting old, remember? All right, Tweety. How much do you want to, to take Sheba back? Well, uh, I reckon uh, about $200 might change my mind. $200? Did you hear him say $200, Roy? Just turning her into hard cash. What? That's plain blackmail. That's what it is. Just ordinary plain blackmail. Then it all depends on which end you're on. Oh, if I didn't know better, I'd swear that you were in cahoots with him. I'm just trying to be impartial, Ben. Impartial? 
Roy, I campaigned for you in your last election. That was the last election. Oh, wait a minute, Ben, I'm just trying to do my day. I ain't gonna pay nobody no $200 to take this bag of pachyderm off my hands. Well, I don't know about that, but I do know this. I want that pachyderm either chained up or out of Virginia City by sundown. Do you understand? been a pretty day, hasn't it? Yeah. Hey, I wonder how Pa's making out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet you he's turned old Tweety away with Lex. Yeah. Sure wish I had some of Pa's good business sense. Yeah, Pa and I have an awful lot in common in that area. You know what I was thinking, too? I wouldn't be a bit surprised if maybe Pa gets a little more than the $400, a little extra profit. Look, Joe. If he just gets us our 400 back and breaks us even, I'll be satisfied. Yeah, yeah, amen. Of course, you never can tell. Yeah, never can tell. You just can't stand to see me and little Joe make a few extra dollars, can you, Adam? Apparently, Pa can't either. Down, Sheba. All the way down, Sheba. Rise, Sheba, rise. Hey, hey, Paul, what's the deal? Mr. Tweedy gonna come out here to pick up old Sheba? Nope. Hey, well, you did, you did talk to Mr. Tweedy like you promised, didn't you? Yep. Oh, you, you made plans to, to have Mr. Tweedy pick Sheba up later? Nope. She finally got to you, didn't she, Paul? You kind of like her now, don't you? Decided to keep her, huh? Uh, well, I... Uh, I decided that since, uh... Since she was really your problem... I wouldn't want to weaken your character by not allowing you to shoulder your own responsibility. That's one way out. What did you say? I say you're right. They'll have to go all out. But, but, Paul, you promised us you'd do the negotiating. Yeah, we were counting on you, Paul. As a matter of fact, we thought you'd even get us more than the $400. Now, look, look, look. I've got more important things to do than negotiate with a larcenous old man and a gluttonous elephant. And incidentally, nobody votes for Roy Coffey next election. Now about the ties. Ramsey wants them delivered to the spur in a week. Yeah, Paul, about them ties... Adam, did you show the boys where you cut them? I sure did. They're uh, all roughed out and stacked. Good. Then you can start floating them down in the morning. We can. Now, Joseph, I've had two very tough days, and I'm in no uh, mood... Pa, little Joe's telling the plain truth for a change. And what's that? Oh, uh, Paul, the, the creek run dry. Creek's gone dry? Yep. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Gods have turned against me. All right, look. First thing in the morning, first thing in the morning, we'll, we'll put on our thinking caps and we'll try to figure out some way of getting those blasted logs down off that mountain. I'll get right at it, Pa. Yeah, it's a good idea, Pa. I'll set the alarm clock extra early in the morning, jump right up and get right to thinking. That reminds me of a thing. I want an around-the-clock sentry duty on that elephant while she's here at the ranch. Starting in the morning? Around-the-clock, horse. What for? She's tame. Uh, she's tame, all right. She's also sneaky. Look, pa, if you want me to figure out how to get those logs off the mountain, I've got to get some sleep. Joseph, just keep your eye on her. Get out of the fridge! 
Shiva. That ain't funny. You ain't nothing but a nuisance. Just like Paul said, you're sneaky too. It's time for little Joe to relieve me. I'm gonna go get him. You stay right here. And don't you move. You stay right here and I'll be back. You hear? You stay. You stay here. You stay there now, Sheba. Look out. You stay there. Breaking all the windows in the house, you know, Pa's gonna really get angry at you. I thought you was up there asleep. Sleeping? Are you kidding? I'm up there thinking. I'm worn out. But I think I finally came up with an idea. Yeah? What is it? Now here's, here's what we're gonna do. Whoop. Like I told you, Pa, $200 and I take old Sheba off your hands. $200? No wonder Pa was in such a state when he come home yesterday, Joe. Well, make up your mind, boys. Bear Cat and me are moving today. And how are you going to get along with that old Sheba? <coughs> Easy, son. Made me enough at poker last night to buy us a real fine mule. Don't need old Sheba, no how. Only use her to haul the wagon and attract attention. I can make just as much off Bear Cat without her. Is that right? That's right, son. So put up or shut up. You know, horses, just like Pa said, live and learn. Yep. yep. Take the bad with the good. Yep. Or if you can't lick them, join them, right? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by that? Just, just like my brother Hoss said. You see, Mr. Tweedy, we've been thinking very seriously about going in the circus business ourselves. What? Well, why not? We got everything you've got and more. Got old Sheba here to pull the wagon. Got brother Hoss here to wrestle all comers. You can't do that. Oh, can and will, Mr. Tweedy. Town for town. Same towns you're in. You see, Mr. Tweedy, we got a little angle all figured out of our own. We'll come over and I'll wrestle a bear cat, and after I whoop him, <laughs> then we'll invite all of your customers over to our tent, and I'll take on all the challengers. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. Oh, live and learn, Mr. Tweedy. Put up or shut up. Yeah, you gotta take the bad with the good. All right. Even Steven. I take old Sheba back, period. Uh, just a minute. There's also a matter of $400 you owe us. With interest. And not a cent less. I ain't got a penny. Paid all my poker winnings for the mule. We'll take, we'll the, take mule. the mule. Sold! She's up at Barney's stable. Come on, Hoss. Sheba, sure wish we could afford it, you. Oh, it's one appetite like yours is enough for any family. First time I've seen you, Took. Took? <laughs> I got old Sheba back, ain't I? I got Haas to work for us for nothing, didn't I? All it cost me was a spavin mule I won in a poker game. That man ain't been born that can take Angus Tweedy. It takes real managerial brains to get along nowadays, you know? Yeah, I reckon. Hey, you know, wait a It's about the deal we just pulled off. <laughs> yeah, I reckon we did sort of pin old Angus the mat, didn't we? Oh, we did that. <laughs> hey, you know something I was wondering? I'm just wondering what a real fine mule will fetch right now. I don't know, Joe, but he's got to be pretty valuable. You know, Angus ain't one to be took. <laughs>
Hey, Pa! Oh, horse, I'm worn out. Yeah, that was a long ride for you, Joe. Hello, Adam? Uh-huh. Well. Where have you fellas been? Well, I'll wait till you're here. One, one thing at a time. I have come up with a solution to our problem. Yeah, but I just want to tell you about old Sheba. Exactly, old Sheba. Now, we need a physical force to bring those ties down off the mountain, right? Now, the creek's dried up, so that physical force is gone, right? Now, there's no road up there, lots of rocks. So we don't use horses for fear of breaking legs, right? Now, what other physical force do we have in the Ponderosa right here and now? Horse? Oh, no, no, no. Come on, think that. Try to figure out how do you use one problem to solve another problem. Well, what other problem do we have? Old Sheba? Exactly, old Sheba! You know, I remember seeing pictures once of uh, elephants in India. They're hauling whole trees. That's exactly right, Adam. So you put a harness on Sheba, put a sled behind her, and she'll haul those ties down from that mountain as pretty as you please. Pa? Now, come on, get Sheba out of the barn. Let's get going. Yeah, well, Pa, uh... Well, what? What? Well, I... Speak right up, little manager. Speak right up. We see, Horse and I took old Sheba into town, and, uh... And slickered Mr. Tweedy into taking her back. Pretty pretty as you please. Yeah, we, <laughs> we slickered him. <laughs> what? Oh, we, we didn't come back empty-handed. Oh, it... There's a... Look, that. That, that magnificent elephant, that royal pachyderm for that, that mule. Was the only thing of real value he had, Pa. It's the only thing. Quiet! For weeks, I labored to negotiate a deal with the railway company to put a spur track on our property. For weeks, I worked to negotiate a contract to sell timber for those railway ties. And for those same weeks, you two were gallivanting around the country, wrestling your time away. You were through playing around. Those ties are up in the mountain. They have to be at the spur line in one week. One week. Yeah, one week. That's what he said. Tuck it out myself. Well, we did it, Pa. We did it. Every single one of those ties is off the mountain and at the spur. I knew I could do it if I put my mind to it. Your mind. Well, I must say, I never thought you could do it. Oh, you did a real good job. Well, Pa, it's an unbeatable combination. Brains and brute strength. Well, <clears throat> little Joe, in all fairness to your brain power... 
If it hadn't been for uh, horse's muscle power, those ties would still be up on top of that mountain. Yes, but without my conditioning, he wouldn't have had the muscles to pull the ties off the mountain. <laughs> oh, it must be raining a deluge up on that mountain. Oh, Snake Creek will be running in a matter of minutes. We well, can't win them all, Hoss. <laughs> Did you hear that? Snake Creek's got water in it. It's gonna be flooding. It's gonna be full, Joe. There's water in Snake Creek. Water. Yeah, there's water in Snake Creek. That's what we've been waiting for, Hoss. Yeah? Water in Snake Creek. You know what that means? That now you can enter the annual Snake Creek Canoe Contest. A thousand dollars. A thousand dollars. Thousand dollars. Wow. And all you need is a good manager and a big, big canoe. Yeah. A thousand dollars. Wow. Now, here's what I'm going to do for you. 